Relax, the keyboard is off and the press box is closed, but the mic is just getting warmed up. Welcome to the Hockey Writers, Inc., the show where the writer is fresh off the presses and the ink is not dry. Join your host, Lance Green, the guardian of the blue paint turned writer, and co-host Steel Flyers, as we bring you all the latest on the Philadelphia Flyers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the next edition of the Hockey Writers, Inc., with your host, Lance Green. All right, Steele. It's pretty exciting time to be a Flyers fan right now. Um, some activity has happened uh, with some leagues around the world. Activity? Yeah. Yeah. Some leagues around the world have ended, which uh, surprisingly has um, brought in a, a couple of good players. Uh, uh, to Voorhees lately, so uh, let's let's get into the show, huh? <laughs> oh my gosh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Hockey Writers Inc. We are a Philadelphia Flyers centric podcast. I'm your co-host Ron Steele Flyers, and Lance is our host. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, with episode number one sixty one. The Russians are coming. The Russians are coming, and 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 a Belarus guy's coming too. But 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 well, you know what? I get what I'm saying there. You know, <laughs> and 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 Lance, I'm like, I'm beside myself in excitement. I'm, I can tell. I'm. I don't even know what to say. And then, right, to top it all off, right, here's the icing on the cake. You throw this article out that just completely smooths everything over, gives you a a great idea of who Alexi is, gives you a great idea who Ivan is, and, and what timing, what perfectness plants you have written about this young goaltender, now 27. Ivan Fedotov is who I'm talking about. He is now wearing a Flyers sweater. Was at practice today. Today. Gonna be the backup goaltender against the Chicago Blackhawks on Saturday. Lance, please fill in cuz I I don't even know what to say anymore. Yeah, it's exciting. Um, you know, it's uh, kind of unexpected. Um, you know, Ivan's team got knocked out of the playoffs in the KHL and Shucks. miraculously his contract was term- terminated, right? Yeah, I don't know how many dollars or anything uh, might have passed their way to make that happen. Uh, that's all behind the scenes. That's all, you know, rumors and speculation. Who knows what, uh, what it took Danny Briere and Keith Jones to get him over here. But um, he's over here now, right? This is long awaited. Uh, for sure, for sure. This, this kid was drafted many, many moons ago now. Um, so. Let's let's go in a little bit about him, right? Yeah, get us up to speed the, here, the buddy. Kid is, the kid is going to be the largest goalie ever to play in the NHL. He's six foot eight now. He's some things have him as six foot seven, but the Flyers are saying he's grown. He's six foot eight now. He's over, well over two hundred pounds. Um, Dude, that's that's like that's like having Chara. <laughs> Back there in goal, right? Can you yeah. put in goalie pads and a mask and a blocker and big shoulder pads and everything on Chara to stand back there? You know, he goes down into his butterfly and, and you can't even tell. His head's still <laughs> over the crossbar, yeah. So it's been a long waited road to get him here. <clears throat> Obviously, we know he about him being forced into military service after signing with the Flyers and then uh, missing a season. And then this season coming back and the KHL kind of signed him um, and and went against IIHF uh, rulings and sanctions and did what they wanted to do anyway. Right. So to get this kid over here is amazing. Um, 
you know, he was a breakout star in 21, 22, uh, making the KHL all-star team voted the best goaltender in the league that year, posting about a two goals against average. He basically carried rush the Russian Federation team, uh, at the Olympics that year to a silver medal, uh, all on his own. Uh, he was outstanding. And he came back after doing that to the KHL and won his team, the Guardian Cup, um, their Stanley Cup. So amazing, amazing season then. Um, this year, he didn't do as well. He still played. He played in 44 games for the Red Army team this year, posted a 2.37 goals against average. But he he wasn't quite 500 goaltender. Um he was ninth in wins, 21st in the league in goals against average, and 35th in the league in save percentage. I don't think the team was as good as it once was. But, you know, he he was here today in Voorhees. Like, he's, like Ron said, he practiced um, with the Flyers, uh, had a press conference at 11. He can speak some English. Um you know, a little bit, uh, it was a little difficult to understand it, but I'm sure that will get better. Uh, you know, had a whole new pad set up, color matching pads set up already here. Uh, glove hand look kind of broken already. I think you can get them from the factory kind of game ready or at least practice ready, broke in already. So it's exciting. So, so, so they got somebody, they got some some guy that stands there and wears that that hockey equipment, right? You know, here, break this in a little bit. Give, give me a couple of saves, and, and we'll clean it up and send it on over. You know. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and then and then the equipment guy, you know, is is doing that as well. Once it gets there, making sure it's ready for him. So yeah. <clears throat> this guy could potentially be great. He's he's destined to start with the Flyers. He's not going to the Phantoms. He's going to play. Yeah. With the Flyers, he's 27 yeah. years old. Um, you know, he has plenty of professional um, experience in the KHL. So that is, in a nutshell, what we're going to get out of him. He, You know, Danny Briere talked and he said that, you know, Sam is going to still hold the number, number one, one number one spot. He's earned it after, you know, stepping up when the whole Carter Hart debacle you know, broke out and, you know, he was all of a sudden not with the Flyers anymore. So, you know, I, I think so. He's earned it, right? But there's another goaltender, Steele, coming coming over as well, right? Why don't you talk on him a bit? Uh, I'm with you on that. I'm with yeah. you. And, and Alexei uh, Kozlov is, has been playing exponentially well. Um, for his KHL team and has done extremely well for himself this year. Mm -hmm. But I think the whole thing of it is, is that he's going to go directly to the Phantoms. Yeah. And, and, and I think that that in and of itself is going to be a huge boost for the Phantoms because I think that is a major upgrade to Cal Peterson. For sure. Or Felix Sandstrom. Or I Felix think. Sandstrom. And, and, you know, look, nothing against Felix Sandstrom, but you and I have known since day one that Felix Sandstrom was never really going to be the answer for anything, any long term in the Flyers organization, period. Mm -hmm. And basically it was just a stopgap and another body to be here because of the losses of you know, let's let's go back. Let's go back and, and, and see, you know, because this whole thing, we talked about this on the, the we you know, a couple of shows ago about at the trade deadline, uh, the Flyers didn't get a goaltender. And we were scratching our head going, uh, you know, right. what, what's, what's going on here? They didn't get anybody, nothing. They didn't pick up a guy off of waivers, nothing. And and we saw how the gauntlet of games that the, that the Flyers had to go through, playing the top teams in the league, and and well, you know, three, five, and two. I don't know about you, but that's not 
that that's going through that gauntlet coming out the other end pretty bloody if you ask me <laughs> well it is but uh given the teams that they had to face through that gauntlet of all things you know, considered top, right top end teams it wasn't really that bad now you know you you look at a canadians you know game that they should have won uh being that they're the worst team in the atlantic division and they they dropped the ball. So those are the games that they had to win. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's great if they were yeah. to pick up points against the Rangers and everybody else. But, man, you got to win the games you get, you know, you got to win there. So, but, but what I'm trying to say, though, is this. Maybe maybe they knew, maybe Danny Brayer right. knew. Something was in the works already with that. That there, this was a possibility that this could potentially happen. And that's why they didn't make a move to get a goaltender it would make sense um and and let's face it it was only really I don't know, seven games or nine games from the trade deadline until now right where where yeah. <laughs> where ivan's gonna be you know backup goaltender for the chicago game this coming saturday so this is kind of where and and we talked about it for years about Chuck Fletcher was not able to get this player here when he had the chance and should have gotten him here because then he would have already been here. We would have never have gone through. I right. th- I don't think we would have gone through all the IIHF and all the whole Shebang, thing. Yeah. yeah, right. You know, if, if Fletcher would have just signed him and gotten him here instead of letting him play in the KHL for another two years or whatever, I think things might have been a little different. But, you know, hey, hindsight is twenty twenty. So he's here now, and I am so over the top excited about this guy here that I really see this guy being that turning point because you and I have talked about what he's capable of, what we've seen him do. Look, I understand we haven't seen him in a year because of, you know, the whole whatever, uh, but. When a goaltender of Lance's stature, who has been doing it for as long as Lance has, has been coaching it and teaching it and writing about it, um, playing it and doing it his whole life, when he says that this guy is somebody that is special, you can see how special he is in his play. And and this is a goaltender, I think, that is is could potentially be that cornerstone goaltender that the Flyers have been looking for for so long. Yeah, I mean, it, it was great that the team didn't necessarily go out. If they, if they knew this was in the works, it was great that they didn't go out and get somebody else because, let's face it, you know, we do have Felix Sandstrom on the books till the end of this year. We do have Cal Peterson, who we're paying big-time bucks, $5 million to um, – you know, if he's in the NHL to end of next season. All right. And we already have, you know, uh, some other ones signed as well. You know who the team Carson is signed already. I don't know why he's signed already being that he was going to go back to juniors, but whatever they wanted to sign him, they, they think he's going to be a guy that can help. So we have guys in the system already signed. I'm glad they didn't go out and necessarily go get another backup, NHL goaltender for this season or whatever, if this was going to be in the works. Um, so yes. Um, do I think Ivan could potentially be, um, somebody the flyers have been waiting for, for a long time? Yes, I do. Um, obviously you his see? game <laughs> his obviously his game, um, is all about his size, right? Uh, he takes up a lot of net. OK, Boy. and by a lot, I mean pretty much the whole darn thing. <clears throat> There's nowhere for the puck to go. Um, but you speed, know, agility, the, quickness, right. anticipation, you, uh, being able to read the plays, you, uh, st- puck handling, stick handling. I mean, the, he checks off all the boxes, Lance. Yeah, he's big. He's great. So but. He still got a transition because let's face it, big here, ice, small like, ice. Like like I said, like I said in the article. All right, yep. yeah, the 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 ice is different. Okay, it's it's a lot smaller. The the pucks are going to be coming in, and the guys are going to be coming in a lot faster, a uh, lot less time to react. Okay, 
Um, and, and the talent is a lot better. Let's face it, guys. Um, I don't even think the KHL is on is on point with the NCAA right now. I don't think uh, not right now. I don't that, think that, so. No. You know, um, they could beat a, a a team from over there. Professional ranks could beat, say, Boston College right now, uh, who are filled with first oh. round talent. Oh, drafted. Oh, in the yeah, that, I was just but, gonna say, boy, that's a tall order. <laughs> I mean, let's <laughs> let's let's face it. So, if you look at it as far as talent goes. Some of the top scorers in the KHL this season were Reed Butcher and Jordan, the Flyers' old prospect, Jordan Wheel. Okay, both guys are in their 30s. Um, both guys were career call-up guys in the NHL. They came up uh, from the AHL just to go back down a couple of games later, and that was their whole career over here in North America. Now, I'm yeah. glad they were able to go overseas and make something of themselves overseas, but that is who is leading the league in yeah. scoring over there, guys, 30, 40 goals a, uh, a season. All right. So the caliber is not quite there in the KHL. And as far as goaltending, Zach Ficali, uh, a 28, 28 year old goaltender who was one of my favorite prospects, who I think got messed, uh, screwed over, let's say, by the Canadians having Carey Price and then drafting him. You know, yeah. He wasn't going to get a look there. Right. So, right. Exactly. He spent, yeah. You know, his time in the ECHL and the AHL and he's played four NHL games ever. And he's still in the playoff race now beating one of these two teams that this goaltender, uh, these goaltenders played on and is still fighting for the championship over there. Okay. And this guy's only played in four NHL games. Now that is the quality over there, but so let's, Let's give this guy a couple of games, okay? Let's give uh, Alexi a couple of games when he comes over here because it's a different type of hockey than they're used to. It's a lot more physical. It's a lot faster. So it may take them a couple of games to settle in to to this style of play over here, all right? I do think these guys are great players in their own right, but if they're not going to be immediate NHL All-Stars, I'm okay with that too because exactly it's going to take a little bit of time to get used to this game. You know, even when some of the best have come over, you know, uh, it's taken a minute to get acclimated to the smaller ice. And and I'm not, I mean, when you look at some of the, even some of the best goaltenders in the league today that you even pointed out, yeah, you know, in your article. You know, it it took Shesterkin a year to get a hold of the fact that this is a different ice. It it took Sorokin a year to get acclimated. You know, it took Vasilevsky half a year to get <laughs> acclimated. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. But it it took Bobrovsky, you know, a little bit of time sure. to get acclimated to the smaller ice. But the ones that stand out, the ones that are above and beyond, the ones that I think when you look at them, Lance, and you can see the skill level, you can see the talent, you can see it doesn't matter what you throw at them, they're going to be able to rise above it because they have A, the work ethic, they have B, the talent, they have C, the skill, they have, you understand what I'm saying? So I, I think that and and I'm not just talking about Ivan too, because I I would like to also say this too about Alexi, because I think he is an, a a great young prospect goaltender that has good numbers playing on a good, you know, solid goaltender. Good reaction um, is very is, quick. Yeah, very. Oh my quick. gosh, dude. Uh, I, gets I, across that goal mouth lickety split, and you know before the guy receives the pass even he's already there so you know uh, alexi's amazing he's 22 years old guys he's he even beat ivan in some stats um and this year um so 
you know, as, as far as wins as well this season. So, you know, I'm playing on a little bit better team, I think. Okay, uh, but, but still. Put up amazing, respectable numbers yeah. um, in, in the KHL this year and is only going to get better. So um, I'm excited to see this kid as well. He's dealing with a little bit of work visas uh, issues right yeah. now, and that's why he isn't already over here. Um, the Flyers are trying to figure that out right now and, and get him over here so they can be placed in the Phantoms and kind of get acclimated and uh, help them out, you know, on uh, potentially trying to get into the playoffs. So right, because uh, exciting, kind of exciting time all around. And I think the reason why these Russian goaltenders have seemingly taken over is because years ago, when the Finns and the Swedish goaltenders were all the rage in the NHL, right? Russia took this and, and they saw this. And, you know, they they went back and perfected it. Um, these these Finns and these Swedes back in the day were doing a lot more than North American Canada or, or USA were at the time. I mean, the, our guys, you know, worked hard, whatever like that. And, you know, they practiced and then, and then they went back and relaxed and whatever like that. And that's just not like how Russia operates. They are, you know, gonna do everything in their power morning, noon, and night to become the best at, at everything. And you see that in gymnastics, you see that in every sport that they play. Um, you know, and that's why the Red Army team back in the day was so hard to beat because these guys eat, sleep, and breathe this stuff. And that's what these goaltenders, and you saw that with Bobrowski when he was here, the before game work ethic, you know, he could be seen inside the rink an hour and a half, two hours before the game, running the steps, focused, you know, uh, doing some soccer, doing this and that in the, in the tunnels and stuff in the background there, you know the work ethic before, after practice, before practice, before a game, everything, these guys have it. And that's why I think that they are becoming the the elite goaltenders of this league. And hopefully, you know, Ivan and Alexi can follow suit with this because they've, they've went through that same training and, uh, you know, and, and have come out with the other side with NHL deals now. So um, hopefully they are just in, you know, the next ones in a long line um, succession of, of successful goaltenders coming out of Russia and, you know, Belarus playing, area playing for the Flyers and playing for the Flyers. You know, yep. let's, let's let's add that little that little key fact in there, too, that, you know, hey, they're going to be playing for the Flyers and, and we're all for that. I'm, I'm I'm all for giving the help down to the Phantoms because they've been depleted because the flyers have been depleted especially uh on the blue line so there's been a lot of of uh reliance on the ronnie atards and uh you know and i i gotta tell you man i'm i'm impressed with the jenning and the atard line i i i really like how they're playing it's like you can't even tell they were playing down in the ahl like they look like they belong do you know what I mean? Night in and night out, uh, they're 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 doing the right things, playing the right way. Yeah, they make some mistakes because they're young and, and everything else like that. But they're, for the most part, they're doing the right things. And and I I think that with the insertion of this goaltending, okay, maybe the timing is a little bad and everything else like that, and it might not be able to save quote unquote save this season. And that's okay too. And I'm not expecting Ivan to come in and, you know, be this, you know, savior guy that's going to come in and suddenly the Flyers are going to make it all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals, which anything can happen as long as you make it to the dance. But I'm not counting on that and I'm not, you know, expecting that. But I am expecting to see that finally now a a goaltending room now that has got some serious chops and and a, a position that is now locked in and taken care of to the point where now we can concentrate on center and getting that center that the Flyers so desperately need that is is able to put the puck in the net that's that's that finisher that is able to to be that guy that you know can can be the hang the banner off the side of the building, 
you know, maybe he doesn't wear the C, but I don't really give a snot as long as he's putting the puck in the net. It's not a matter of if he's going to score. It's a matter of when he's going to score. They need a guy out on the ice that the other team has to be worried about when they step on. And the Flyers don't have that. Yeah, I mean, I I think you made some great points there. Uh, Ronnie Attard and uh, Jenning have looked solid for the Flyers. Um, You know, they may be not putting up a lot of points, but they're plus players. They're doing their job. They're allowing those first and second pairing defensemen the time to sit down and relax and not feel like they have to get back out there, right? (laughs) For a minute so they can get back out there. Um, You know, uh, with what the um, Ivan could bring, you know, we we look um, at, at crossing that that depth chart. You know, okay, check. Like you said, um, we have probably the most exciting goaltenders room as far as names go and prospects coming in all at the same time for the first time in years. Um, you know, it, it is filled Since and, Pelly. and there's, and there's more coming to, um, Pelly. I, I, I really think, I really think the flyers did great job and, uh, drafting the, the, probably the second goaltender that they drafted, uh, this year as well, uh, this past summer as well. And, uh, uh, Zarvregan, um, you know, another Russian goaltender. Imagine that, right? Um, I, I think he's going to be great. He's coming up through the the lower ranks um, in in the Russian leagues right now, but his numbers are outstanding. Uh, so look for more to come in that goaltending lane. And you know, I've already written articles on what I think the Flyers, uh, you know, should do with some of their top picks. And yes, deal. You know, one of them is a center. Um, you know, and I, and I do think uh, Dean Latournou, um from St. Andrews College in Canada is that guy. He could be that sneaky guy we pick up with our second uh, first round pick. Uh, he's a huge, huge center, bigger than Lindros was. Um, and, um, you know, he's got the scoring ability. I really hope that the Flyers would take a chance on him uh, with that second pick. He's probably projecting out to be a early second round pick, but, okay, uh, but no way do I let this guy go. I would take him with that for end of that first round pick because you know, Florida is projected to probably go back to the Stanley cup finals or, or Eastern conference finals. Uh, yeah. So their pick is going to be very late in the draft uh, in the first round. So I would say draft this guy. He's got tons of offensive Great ability. Point. Yeah, um, great point. And you know, go back and go back to the website steelflyers.com and read that article. Um, I guarantee you, he will be in my future mock drafts uh, as the season uh, finishes up. Uh, amazing, amazing offensive talent who I think the Flyers need to to draft because let's face it, like Steele said, that mold. We have too many defensive centers. You know, Sean Couturier, defensive center. Um, you know, Scott Lawton, Noah Cates, Paling, all defensively responsible centers, but nobody's putting up a ton of points. Um, we got to have some help for, you know, some of these wingers, right? Um, uh, just, I want to see some help, some scoring depth down the middle, and this kid could be it. So, um, Man, just just an exciting time to be a Flyers fan again. We I'll have say. Danny Briere at the helm and and Keith Jones at the helm, and they're getting the job done, right? Um, you know, let's let's face it. Fletcher sat on his hands and couldn't get the job done, and that's why he's not here anymore. Um, Danny Briere is saying that he's not afraid to to get a little help. He's new to this, right? he's not afraid to get in touch with the league and say, Hey, this is what I'm trying to do. How do I go about this correctly? You know what I mean? He's asking for help. Imagine that. Um, he has an idea. He has something that he wants to set out and, and do, and he gets it done and he gets it done legally because 
he asked for help and made sure that he's doing it and approaching it the right way. So kudos to this organization uh, for draft for for you know hiring Danny and Keith Jones in this new outlook. It's refreshing. Um, they're getting the job done. They're setting out and and laying out what they want to do, and they're crossing off check marks right and left, and and bringing in these great prospects that they had in the system, and making this all a reality really quickly. I might add you, and and getting rid of from getting rid of some players that were not needed in the Ivan Provorovs or not helping out like that, um, to bringing in you know the Hathaways and the Palings. Um, to to solidify this team's defense. Yeah. Now yeah. we just got to work on the offense a little bit. Tippett's great. Uh, some other guys like Brink and you know Forrester are progressing, and that's great. But we need to get him some help down the middle. And uh, Mitch we Koff have is two years away, maybe. Right. So you know what I you mean. Know, so they yeah. drafted him. He's an amazing talent. So I think we're progressing in the right way uh, and and projecting even a little bit. Um, faster than um, most. Yeah, I would agree think, with that. You know, who would I, think yeah. at this time that we would still be third in in the Metropolitan Division? Barely How, by one squeaky. Barely, point. right? Barely. We got to win these upcoming games against these non-playoff teams, guys. Okay, the well, rest well. of this, the Flyers' schedule is not that scary. We got to play New York Rangers one more time, but the rest of the schedule is not that scary. To close out the year, we already played 74 games. We have to close out these games, and and some of these games are against these teams that are fighting to get our playoff spot. We have to close out games, and hopefully Fedotov can do that. You know, that's a, and help that's us a with that. Great point, Lance, because I I believe that the Flyers' magic number is 92. Okay. Okay. They have nine games left. They need points in at least five of them games. Okay? That gets them to 92. All right? That's kind of where I'm at. Okay? We've we've gone through the gauntlet. All right? Great. Now you've got some, some goaltending that can help out. Okay? That can at least take some of the pressure off. And now that Arison doesn't have to feel like he has to be the man all the time. Because, look, when you have that kind of pressure in every single game you go into, you're, you're not playing your game. You're not playing the best that you can be because you're, you're trying to do more than what you should. Right? Because you have to be the, that guy that is to be able to put the team on your back and all that other stuff. He doesn't need to do that anymore. OK, you got a guy that you can rely on that's going to got you got your back. And I think Ivan Fedotov is going to do that and help solidify that. I think that seeing the likes of Drysdale and um, Sealer skating. Um, that is going to be great news to hear the Danny Breer saying that Sealer's some of these close, guys yeah. are close to coming back. That means that right at the right time, these defensive guys are coming back. A, 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 a sure stop goalie is now in place. And you've got the pieces to either make a nice little run or, hey, it was great. Look what we were able to put together. Let's see what we can do next year. Do you know what I mean? So if they make the playoffs, cool. But if not, Cool too. You yeah. know what I mean? I, I think the Flyers are gonna make the playoffs. I, I but whether or not it's gonna be as a as a, a wild card or whether it's gonna be a third seed, uh, yet to be determined, yeah. That's the yet to be determined. Like I said, the magic number for me is ninety two. I believe if they get to ninety two points, they will be in the playoffs. As probably the third seed. Okay. But that's going to be depending on what Washington does, what the Islanders do, what Detroit does, what, you know what I mean? So there's a lot of ifs there, but 
The Flyers are actually in control of their own destiny. All they need to do is win the games they're supposed to win and garner the points they're supposed to garner, and they will be able to punch their ticket into the second season. The game against the Rangers was a great example of, oh my gosh, I can't believe they did that. That was amazing to see that grit, that determination, that, oh yeah, well, I can tie it up too. Oh yeah, well, I can tie it up again. And oh yeah, well, I can tie it up again. Okay. And so seeing that resilience, seeing that, you know, coming back, that want to, that that drive, I, I think has shown where this team really is right now. Okay, and where they're aspiring to and where they can potentially get to. For sure. I think that, you know, most people didn't think this team could do that at the beginning of the season. No uh, way. I thought Nobody. it was going to be a lot of 2-1 games, 3-2 uh, yeah. yeah. games, something like that. Um, and low scoring, you know, kind of Buffalo Sabres you know, esque hockey there. You know, you know right? from years from years ago, right? When they had a good goaltender in there, but um, it's not. Uh, some of these guys are really progressing. Joel Farabee's coming on. All the other guys I just talked about as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, they are they are coming on. They're young. They're hungry, and they want this. And they're being told, you know, you know, by their coach. Um, nobody expects you to do this. Nobody expects you to be the team that you are right now and still be, um, you know, in the position you are in the standings and, exactly. you know, that, that hungry dog, right. Um, let's, let's keep, keep that feeding up. It. Keep, keep feeding, feeding it. it. Keep feeding yeah. that hungry dog because it, it's going to bite. It's going to bite. And, uh, you know, these young guys are ready and every prospect that's coming in to join them is, is going to be, you know, a uh, uh, a help to this club moving forward and let's face it guys it's going to be exciting as the years go by here in the next couple of seasons because we got two first round picks in each of the next two drafts I um, know. and you know whatever else danny can get his hands on as far as you know draft capital he's going to try to do um you know it, it's nice to have a guy who isn't sitting on his hands and he makes deals the hard deals i mean uh you got guys injured. Ones, you got though, guys you know, injured yeah. and you trade a guy who's a top four defenseman for you with an expiring contract to the Col colorado avalanche and he's doing great there but what did we get we got a potential you know first round we got a first round draft pick that is going to be hopefully part of our future when this team is getting together and actually going to be a stanley cup contender, contender again yeah in the next three to four seasons and i'm with you on that too lance i i do agree i think that with the moves that danny and and keith and this administration have done i think they've moved the timetable up a considerable amount, you know what I mean? I, where, you know, we all thought this was going to be a five-year thing, where and I think we're going to be more closer to like a three-year thing. Because once I think, once you get the Mitch Coffs here and in camp, do you know what I mean? I, I, I think you're really, I, I think that's, that's where we're going to kind of start to see that next level for the Flyers. Now, my next question is going to be, is Tortorella going to be the coach? for the future um, because his contract is set to expire before Mitchkoff is probably going to be over here. Well, so that's kind of what I'm going to be interested to see what's going to happen because if, if, if he wins the Jack Adams this year, Tortorella does, if he wins the Jack Adams this year, you have to extend him as far as I'm concerned. If he wins a Jack Adams, you have to sign him to an extension at least another four more years or more or whatever, or whatever he wants. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because as far as I'm concerned, he's doing the right things. I scratch my head sometimes about his um, um, his tactics. Uh, you know, why are you scratching a, a, a captain, you know, 35 days after you make him the captain? I'm scratching my head on some of that stuff. But, hey, 
he, he's the one that's won the Jack Adams. He's the one that's got his name on the cup, and I have nothing. So uh, I'm going to, you know, put my faith in Tortorella and say, okay, you, you obviously know what's best for this team. So until somebody says otherwise, I'm going to trust you, you know? <laughs> well, I think this is the type of team that Tortorello uh, is, is made to coach, right? He just, he Seems likes. so perfect. He he likes this, and that's why I think he took on the challenge. Yeah, uh, and, and you know he had a gig and nice gig, and just going into the you know television studio and, yeah. studio and and commenting on some stuff and getting out and collecting a check, pretty nice check at that. So, but he decided to come back to coach again because he's hungry for it. He wants to do it, but because of the opportunity with this club, with the with this you know team that he saw promise in and and everything like that. And, and he's been able to get the most out of them. So I agree. Do I think he will end up winning the Jack a- Adams award? I don't think so. Probably. I don't you know, either, but not, I'm saying if he does, it'll prob- uh, you know, he's, he's certainly done enough to deserve to, but I think I it'll be given to somebody else just out of whatever, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I don't think the league likes likes to um you know admit that uh you know he's he's as good as he is but the numbers don't lie he's second yeah. in uh you know uh, north All american uh, you know uh american born coaches yep. there so um yep. you know behind behind peter laviolette so um you know those two are probably going to go in the the nhl hall of fame for coaching as many wins as they do have um when it's all said and done so you know if he wants to stay here i would let him unless he totally does something tortorello like um and you know cashes his own check to um get booted out the door but who knows lavi has lavi has seven i believe lavi has 800 wins now and tortorello has 750 yeah right most wins by american born coaches in the nhl yep so but I'm with you, man. I'm with you. If if he doesn't win, I don't really care. I would still, I would still try to keep him around as a coach. I would too. So He's tell me something, Lance. Uh, the the article that you wrote today, we basically gave you the facts about um, Alexi coming over and helping out the Phantoms, and Ivan coming over and helping out the Flyers, yep. and we gave you a breakdown of exactly uh, what each of these players is going to be able to bring to the table. Um, the Russians and the Belarusians are coming, <laughs> uh, you know, so, um, and, and Lance, uh, you got to go, uh, check out, uh, steelflyers.com and check out Lance's latest article about these two players coming in. And there's, um, great statistics in there and great facts about just exactly what the Phantoms are going to see and exactly, uh, what the Flyers are going to see from Ivan and Alexi, uh, respectively. So Lance, I know you just posted an article, um, just here a couple hours ago. Do you got anything else in the works here? I do. I'm uh, doing my research, uh, for a, another prospect, uh, article, um, a goaltender that is going to be available in this draft. A goaltender? Uh, you? Really? Yeah, imagine that. Imagine that. I found ah! another uh, scary good goaltender that uh, has been kind of overlooked to this point. So um, uh, hopefully get that out here uh, sometime uh, within the next couple of days. Doing my research and uh, making Very sure good. you know I can give you the best article uh, and information I can. So. That's the way we like it, man, because you are the editor and chief. Speaking of the editor and chief of Steel Flyers, um, the <laughs> guardian of the blue paint turned writer, <laughs> the writer extraordinaire, uh, be looking for a new page coming out on the website that's going to feature all of the uh, great other articles that our editor comes up with it's going to be the editor's desk it's going to be all of lance's other articles about the philadelphia phillies and about the philadelphia eagles um be looking forward to that coming out here real soon too uh for sure so we'll give you guys a little announcement when that's all going to happen but uh that's in the works here so that you'll be able to catch all of Lance's other articles that he writes about the Phillies and about the Eagles and about all his other great stuff that he writes about as well, too. So I'll uh, be looking forward to the editor's desk page coming out here in addition to the website uh, for sure, for sure. So 
Lance, why don't you tell the folks where we can get you and where we can find you, sir? Yes, sir. Um, always at steelflyers.com, obviously. And you can catch me on X at lance.green39, as well as any Flyers fan pages on Facebook. All my stuff gets posted on there. Um, you can catch us on YouTube by typing in Steel Flyers there. Uh, you can catch, you know, Prospect Watch shows as well as the Hockey Writers Inc. shows and many, many more uh, shows that this man uh, sitting across from me here uh, gets to post himself. So um, <laughs> by all means, check out all yeah, man. things Steel Flyers. For sure. Um, big thank you to Spreaker for all your help in getting us out there to all of your podcasting platforms. All you have to do is go to your favorite podcasting platform like Spotify or iHeart or um, Apple. Type in Steel Flyers or type in Hockey Writers, Inc. or type in Prospect Watch and you'll be able to get the show that you would like to see and give us a like and give us a follow and give us a five star rating. That helps us to get things moving along. You can also check us out on uh, the YouTube channel, uh, the Steel Flyers All Sports Network YouTube channel, where we post all of our videos and all of our great shorts. We'd like to thank uh, Frame for doing all of those great shorts, man. Big props, big thank you uh, to him for doing those shorts, dude. They are rocking the house. So thank you very much for all the hard work you do and and getting those out there for us, man, because they are some awesome things and they're great little tidbits of information that we'd like to put out there. Also, I'd like to say big, huge props and thanks to the Facebook uh, groups out there from Flyers Mafia to Flyers Nation to um, all of the, you know, um, old time Flyers fans, um, the Phantoms uh, groups, the Flyers groups. Thank you guys for allowing us to be part of that. And thank you for allowing us to post out there. Um, big props to you guys. So thank you very much for that. Uh, I am your co-host, Ron Steel Flyers. And you can catch me on X at Steel Flyers 52. And you can catch all the great stuff at Steel Flyers Com. We will check you all on the next episode of the Hockey Writers, Inc. Check you later.